Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media, and these are Sony's FS100 and FS700. The FS100 and 700 are E-mount interchangeable lens super 35mm high definition cameras. Both cameras have a possible depth of field equivalent to Super 35 film or APS-H still. The FS700's chip is an 11 megapixel Exmor CMOS sensor which is 4K capable and allows the camera to shoot at up to 240 frames per second in Full HD and maxes out at 960 frames per second in standard definition. The FS100's 3 megapixel Exmor CMOS sensor is the same chip used in the Sony F3 and shoots at up to 60 frames per second in Full HD with the capability to shoot 100 frames per second in standard definition. While the FS100 and 700 record to AVC HD internally in 8-bit 420 color space, they also output an uncompressed 8-bit 422 signal via the HDMI or HD-SDI port on the FS700, which make them ideal candidates for external uncompressed recorders. These cameras are great solutions for indie filmmakers, especially those looking to step up from DSLRs without the drawbacks of traditional video cameras. They have the lightweight, maneuverable build, interchangeable lenses, depth of field, and low-light performance that DSLR users have grown accustomed to, with better dynamic range, professional image calibration, and high frame rates. There is something uniquely cinematic about high-speed footage. And while 60 frames per second has become pretty standard, it's not always enough to let your audience know that something's changed, something important has happened, or just getting them to pay attention to the scene. And that's where the FS700 comes in. It delivers uh, speeds at up to 240 frames per second in full HD. When shooting at 120 or 240, you get a crisp image in full HD. At 480, you'll begin to see a fair amount of moiré, which you'll also see at 960, with the addition of cropping the sensor. 240 is going to be your highest usable frame rate, but 480 and 960 are still worth consideration. Both of these cameras have a native ISO of 500, and that's at 0 dB gain. You can take them up to about 6 dB or 1000 ISO before you really start to see noticeable noise. Uh, both perform extremely well in low light. You can go up to 16,000 ISO, and that's at 30 dB gain, but you're going to see quite a bit of noise at that level. Both of these chips are native daylight balanced, so they're going to perform best in daylight. Similar to DSLRs, the FS100 does not have built-in ND, so in most situations this camera is going to be best when paired with a matte box. The FS700, however, has built-in ND at two stop intervals, so you're only really going to need a matte box if you want to fine-tune your image control, or if you want to use uh, filters like circular polarizers, IR hot mirrors, or graduated ND. Our FS100 and 700 packages include the FS100 or FS700 body, Sony E-mount 18 to 200 variable aperture f3.5 to 6.3 zoom lens, class 10 64 gig SD XC memory card, shotgun mic with bayonet mount, two batteries, charger, detachable hand grip, component cable, and remote. The battery is installed by placing it with the logo right side up and sliding it into place until it clicks. The battery is released by depressing the battery release button on the bottom left side. Lift the monitor to reveal the display. The menu button gives you access to the main menu. Use the arrow keys and select button to navigate the menu. Like many professional cameras, camera data can be displayed on the monitor. To set display options, press the menu and go to display set. Within this menu, you can access settings for histogram, zebra, peaking focus assist, frame marker, data display settings, audio level display, LCD brightness, and display output to component and HDMI. The scope is attached by placing it over the monitor with the release button facing down and securing it with the latches on either side. The scope can be released for an unobstructed view of the monitor by pressing the release button. The hand grip is installed by placing it in the desired position and securing it with the hand screw. The record button will be functional once you attach the connector to the control port on the rear of the camera. The FS100 and 700 has start-stop buttons on the hand grip, the top rear, and front lower right side. The lens or lens adapter is installed by pressing the release button and removing the cap by twisting it counterclockwise. Line up the lens using the white dot and twist it until it locks. The E-mount is fairly snug, so it may take more than usual to turn the lens into place. Aperture, or iris control, is located on the front of the camera. The wheel is used to adjust the aperture up or down when using a lens that can communicate with the camera, such as the provided 18 to 200 millimeter. If using our Metabone adapter with Canon EF glass, you will retain fully functioning aperture control. The SD card slot is located on the rear left side. 
64 gigabyte card can provide over five and a half hours full quality recording time. Simply pop open the door and insert the card with the contact points facing out. Then replace the door. The FS100 and 700 accept SDXC or SDHC with a minimum data rate of class 6, but class 10 is recommended. To format the media, go to the main menu, Others, and Media Format. Select Memory Card. You will then be prompted to accept or decline formatting. You can use the arrow keys and execute key to select, but the on-camera monitor does function as a touchscreen in this instance, as well as in playback mode. To set recording format for the camera, go to the main menu, then record, out, set. FX represents the highest data rate encoding and square pixels for the best possible image quality. FH represents lower data rates for extended recording. HW represents lower data rates and 0.75 pixel aspect ratio for further extended recording times at the cost of quality. The FS100 has an HDMI, HD component RCA, SD composite RCA, and left-right RCA audio outputs. In addition to those outputs, the FS700 includes HD-SDI output. Settings for the output can be modified in the main menu under the Record Out Set submenu. Autofocus, Focus Push, and Expanded Focus are also on the front of the camera. The switches on the left side of the camera control gain or ISO preset selection and white balance preset selections. Gain or ISO mode can be toggled under the main menu in camera set. Once you've set your preferred ISO settings for high, medium, and low, you can toggle between them with the switches. Switching between manual and automatic gain, or ISO, is done by pressing the gain button above the gain controls. White balance A and B can be set by selecting one and aiming the camera at a white card and pressing the white balance button next to the switch. If the preset is selected and set up to a custom temperature, the white balance button also allows you to use the selection wheel to change that balance. Once you've selected the desired temperature, press the button to lock the setting in. The shutter is controlled by activating the shutter with the shutter speed button above the wheel. Once selected, use the wheel to select the desired shutter speed or angle and press the wheel to lock the setting. The FS100 and 700 are capable of slow shutter speeds down to one-third of a second. Switching between shutter speed and angle view is done under the main menu in the display set menu. If using the Sony shotgun mic, you will need to install the bayonet mount. The bayonet mount is installed by sliding it into the shoe mount and tightening the bolt to secure it. You can then unlatch the mic mount and secure the shotgun mic. The XLR cable will reach the XLR input on the right side of the camera. The FS100 and 700 have two 3-pin XLR inputs and phantom power. To set up your audio format, go to the main menu and audio set. Here you can select audio formats, audio limit, headphone output, AGC link, trim and wind filters. To set phantom power, input channels and audio levels, use the controls on the top of the camera. Audio can be monitored via the 8th inch headphone jack on the rear of the camera. S and Q mode is where you'll access the camera's ability to over and under crank. To set presets for S and Q motion, go to the main menu, camera set, and S and Q motion. From here, you can set the time base for your over or under cranking. It is wise to match your time base to your standard shooting format. When you're prepared to enter S and Q mode, simply press the S and Q button located on the front side of the camera. Pressing the menu button or S and Q button will automatically take the camera out of S and Q mode. In S and Q mode, the shutter speed, gain, and aperture can be controlled in the same manner as before. S and Q motion will start up in the frame speed and time base presets dictated in the main menu. However, you can change the frame rate by holding down the S and Q button until the frame rate is highlighted. Then use the wheel to dial in and lock the desired frame rate. In this mode, you can shoot at 120 frames per second for a 16 second burst. 240 for 8 seconds, 480 for 10 seconds, and 960 for 19 seconds. Pressing the start-stop button before the burst ends will begin image processing. The FS700 Super Slow Mode, or FS100 Smooth Slow Record, can be triggered in a variety of ways to facilitate whatever situation you need to capture. Start Trigger will begin the limited recording time as soon as you press the button. Start Trigger is best for situations where you have control over the subject and can elicit the desired response with accuracy. When triggered, you will see a message saying buffering, which means that the camera is recording. When you see the message recording, the camera is processing the footage. In triggering, we'll set the camera to buffer the image, so that you can trigger the processing and recording of up to 16 seconds, depending on the frame rate, before triggering the record. The rendered clip will end at the point at which you press the record button, so careful timing should be kept in mind. 
In triggering is best for use with an unpredictable subject, such as wildlife or any kind of documentary work, where you have little control over the response that you wish to trigger. Middle trigger will buffer half the allotted recording time. Middle trigger is generally good for the same situations as in triggering. Playback is entered by pressing the visual index button on the top of the camera. In visual index mode, the monitor functions as a touchscreen. You can select between media and filter by HD and SD footage, as well as still images. Selecting a clip and pressing it will play the clip. If you enter the menu, you will have the option to change LCD settings, output settings, and protect, erase, or copy clips. So that's the basic setup for the FS100 and FS700. For more videos and more tutorials, check us out at magnanimous.biz.